Hi there, my name is Dot Porter and I'm the Curator for Digital Research Services in the University of Pennsylvania Libraries. I work in the Kislak Center for Special Collections, Rare Books and Manuscripts, and I split my time with the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies. SIMS, as we call it, is a research and development group that is located in the Kislak Center and we focus on manuscript studies very broadly defined. So we work with digital manuscripts and we have physical collections, mostly medieval manuscripts, but also ranging out of the medieval period. Although I am a medievalist and most of what we're going to be looking at today as part of this walkthrough of digital MAPA is going to focus on medieval materials for, for a few different reasons. So this is a walkthrough kind of tutorial uh, for Digital MAPA. So Digital MAPA, it's an open source digital humanities platform for open access workspaces, projects, and publications. Digital MAPA has been developed by Martin Foyes. He is a professor of English and digital humanities at the University of Wisconsin. And SIMS has been involved with the development of DM for quite a few years. We partnered with Martin on an NEH grant and have sort of stayed involved over the years. And since DM has entered its 2.0 phase, which is very exciting, we are now hosting an installation of DM at SIMS. And we are inviting people from the Penn community and from Philadelphia to use DM to build their own projects. Although anybody who wants to is, is more than welcome to watch this tutorial. It's really aimed at people at Penn in the Philadelphia area, particularly people who are interested in our local manuscripts. So part of what I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can use DM to build a project around manuscripts that were digitized as part of the Bibliotheca Philadelphiensis project. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. So as I've been talking, you have no doubt been watching the screen and you have been seeing the screenshots go across. So you may even by now have, have sort of an idea about what DM projects look like and the kind of things that they're doing. So you can see there's a lot of images. There are a lot of annotations. There are colorful boxes and highlights. And I'm going to show you how you do this. DM is, is essentially about linking things together. It's very much about annotating. It's about linking text and image. You can use it to link transcriptions to text. You can use it to link descriptions to images and all kinds of things. It's actually really, really flexible in, in how it works like that. The DM website is at digitalmappa.org and you can come here to view showcase projects. These are projects that are hosted at SIMS and also at Wisconsin. We'll take a look at a couple of them when, when we go through the walkthrough. You can also learn a little bit more about DM, learn about the history, how it works. You can get to know the people involved. There are some different guides that are available on the website. These will supplement what I'm going to be talking you through today. There is a viewer guide as a user coming to a project, there is a certain amount of a learning curve. And so this document could be very helpful for that. If you want to create DM projects, you know, I'm going to walk you again through how to do that. But this document will also be very helpful. The creators were aware of some of the issues that are coming out of DM 2.0. And we're actually looking at going through the next phase and fixing some of those things. So if you find that it's not doing something that you think it should be doing, you can come here and sort of see what's going on. If you want to install your own DM instance, there are instructions here. But we also have our installation at Penn, which you are welcome to sign up for and use to create your own projects. Let's take a look at that. So this is DM. The URL for our installation is sims2.digitalmappa.org. And if you go there, it's not very beautiful, but you can see immediately which projects are public. If you want to create your own account, you can come here and register. Register your new user, put in your email, whatever you want your display name to be, confirm a password, and then click register. 
I am already registered, so I'm going to sign in. And the first thing that's happened is there are now other projects that are here, projects that aren't public that I have access to. Some of them are mine and some of them aren't, uh, but I'm an admin. So if you sign up for an account, you can email me and then I can come in and accept your registration here. So first, let's have a look at a couple of different projects that are here. So you can sort of get a sense of the kinds of products that people are, are making with this. So here is a project of Martin's in Old English and Medieval Latin edition. So in this instance, he's used DM to build an edition of this sort of dual Old English and Latin text. One of the great things that you can do about DM is you can organize your material into sets. And in terms, I think of it in terms of, of book chapters. So it's a little bit like a book with chapters, only the chapters are sort of like folders full of material. So we have the introductory materials. These documents that have the, the T there, these are text. And so if I click on that, you can see this, this, this in this case, this is sort of how, how to document, how to use the edition, how to cite it. You can embed images into editions. So here we've embedded the Sims logo there. There's them moving on. There's instruction and bibliography. Here we go. So I clicked on this and it just opened right up here. So we'll close that one. And then we have that one, the visual collation. So all this information here, and these are all text documents. But what about the edition itself? Here is the Latin version of this text. It's in this manuscript. So first we have the, the image files. It looks like it's on one folio. We've got 102 recto and 102 verso. Then there's a text document of the transcription. There's a modern English translation and there's a Latin glossary. So in this case, there are a few different ways that you can go about viewing this edition, depending on what you want to see. So I like to look at manuscripts. So I'm going to actually start by opening up this first page. So I'm going to click that and it's going to open up. And here is the manuscript. You can see immediately that it's been annotated word by word because we have these, these underlines. And if you mouse over them, you will get these little windows that pop up. And this is the links. These are the links that the editor has built in and it shows you where you can go. So there are three parts to these little pop-up windows. The first is the title. And this is a title. And when we get to the point where we're making our own, you'll sort of see how this works. In this case, this is a transcription of this text. And so the editor has chosen to make the title of, of the pop-up window the word. As you scroll along, you're going to see that every word is the title of the pop-up window that you get when you scroll over that annotation. But then each one also links out to two other things. One of them links to the Latin transcription, which is this document here. The other one links to the Latin glossary, which is here. So I'm reading through the manuscript. Now I want to actually see the transcription. I want to see what that looks like. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to open this document up. So I'm, so I'm here on the page and where is my usus? Where did it go? So here it is. And you can see that this usus also has an annotation that links out and it links to the manuscript page. So it's actually linking back here. There is a link between these two, um, these two annotations. And it also links to the Latin, the Latin glossary. So the way that DM does these links is it links two things together. So if you go to one, it will point always to the other one. And then you can have as many other links as you want. So we link to the Latin glossary. So I'm going to click on the Latin glossary. And this is going to open. So it's linked us directly to 
the Latin glossary, so we can see immediately what usus means. It means use, usage, nominative, singular, masculine, all of the information that you want. And then this again links to the transcription. So it's linking from here back up to here. And it's also linking the manuscript. So again, we're getting this link up to this instance of usus here. So the links move round and round. You could start, if you wanted to access the edition through the glossary, you could even do that. If there were particular, you know, words that you were interested in, you just go to the glossary and say, Ecclesia, church assembly. You can see, okay, where does this appear? It appears in the transcription. I want to see it in the manuscript. And there it is. It's right there, right? So DM gives you this ability to link at a very granular level, which is great for, you know, for texts. So this is an example of an addition. Let's look at something a little bit different. So we're going to come out of here and there we go. we're going to come out. We're going to look at the virtual mappa. The virtual mappa is sort of the original project that DM was designed for. So Mappa Mundi are these very usually large maps of the world, medieval maps of the world. So the, so the image files are large and there's a lot of data around them. Martin basically designed DM to be able to handle the kind of editing work that was going to have to happen to bring the virtual mappa to the world. And it's just really lucky that in addition to being able to handle the maps, it can actually handle a lot of other stuff too. So here is the organization for virtual mappa. Again, we start out with how to use this resource. We have the introductory materials and then we have the maps themselves. So each map or sort of group of maps, so TO maps, have their own section on the Higdon maps altogether. So we'll start with the Cotton Tiberius B5. Actually, no, let's start with Hereford, the Hereford map. Very famous map from Hereford Cathedral. So there's a note, again, on how to use it. There's a document on the description and sources, and then there's the map itself. So let's, let's click on that map and see what happens. So here it comes. It's going to take it. It's going to take a minute. Um, and I'm going to close. There we go. So we get the full view. All right. And you can see <laughs> there's a lot of annotation going on here. There's the purple annotations. This is a little bit different. The editing project that we looked at had three main documents that we were moving between. There was the glossary, and there was the transcription, and there was the image. This one is done a little bit differently. So in addition to linking aspects of the image with you know, bits of text in a larger document, you can also do just annotations, and that's what is being done here. So here we have each little bit of the image, each little transcription or, or image, you know, illustration on the image has its own little document that is an annotation. And so in this case, we have the, di the diplomatic transcription, the normalized transcription and the English transcription. And then there would be notes if there were notes there. If you had to make one single large document with all of that information here, it would be pretty difficult to manage, but that DM, has this functionality of making, you can either do one large document, which is great for editing, you know, larger texts, or you can do lots of tiny annotations is just really like speaking as somebody who makes editions like this, it's really useful. We zoom way in and we can see all of the little bits of the, of the map that each one of them has been outlined and defined and given an annotation of its own. One Another sort of really nice thing about DM is there are a lot of ways that you can draw outlines of things. So in the previous example, the text on the page was marked with underlines. So you can do lines. You can do 
circles and boxes. And then you can just draw whatever shape you want, which is really useful. I'm looking over here at this manticore. So looking at this manticore, um, you know, that you can, that you, you don't have to make a box around it. You can actually outline it there at, at a great detail, which is pretty great. So let's see what it has to say about the manticore. So the manticore has its own transcription, translation, Solanus, the manticore is native to India. Triple series of teeth, the face of a human, yellow eyes, the color of blood, a leonine body, a scorpion's tail, a sibyl's voice. That is a pretty intense. And there's an image of the manticore there. So that's pretty great. So you can basically go around the map and, you know, see what's going on, which is pretty neat. Okay, so that's the virtual map project. Let's go out. All right, so let's see. What does it take to create a new project? You go to new project. You give it a title. You give it a description. DM enables you to add collaborators. So if there are other people, they have to have accounts on DM. But if everyone has accounts on DM, you can, you can sign them up and you can add people as readers. That is, they can just see what you're working on without you making it public, but they can't change it. They can write, which simply means that they can do all the editing things, or admin, and admin would give them the ability to add other collaborators, to make their project public, and to delete the project. So you obviously you want to be really careful who you're giving admin and write access to. I have already made a, a, a new project for the purposes of these walkthroughs. So I'm going to go out and find my sample project. And there's already some stuff in here. So here we are in the sample project. And the first thing you want to do when you're developing a new project is think about the organization that you want. How do you want to organize your project? What the sections are? what content goes into each section, this kind of thing. So as you can see in the sample project, which is really random, I have currently one folder that's the introduction. I have a folder that's chapter one and a folder that's chapter two. And this is pretty typical. The other projects that we took a look at are organized in a sort of similar way. You, you know, you create your project and you want to create a new folder. You hit the new folder button and every time a folder is created, it's going to be created here on the top level. To change the name, you just do that right here. We'll call this chapter three. And then we can move it down. So we grab it and we move it down here. But you can also have folders within folders. So I'm going to make a new folder. Let's call this images. So in this case, we're going to have an image folder inside the chapter folder. So I'm going to drop it there. And if I open up chapter three now, you can see the image folders are here. And you can put as many folders as you have to in another folder. So here we are in chapter three, we have this image folder. And now we want to start creating documents. We've already seen in the other projects that the documents go inside the folders. They can also be out on the main level. But generally, for most projects, you're going to be organizing them into some kind of system. There are text documents, which have this icon here with the two little T's. And if you import any images, the images will have a thumbnail. So if we look at these other chapters, each one has a text file and then the thumbnails of the images. So for chapter three, we want to create a new text file. So you, you use this one here. You can create a document or an image. We're going to create a document here. So now we're in the text document. And the text document is going to look similar to what you find if you open up Google Docs or Microsoft Word. There's not as much going on, but the look is the same. So you have options for formatting. You have text size right here. You have this option for including a hyperlink, which is going to be helpful if you want to link to things that are outside of the project. So there's linking inside the project and then there's linking outside of the project. And you want to be able to do both. There is lists, you can make different kinds of lists. And then there's this selecting a highlight, which is going to become important when we're at the point of creating the highlights that link the project together. So the first thing we actually want to do is change the title up here. We're going to call this chapter three. Why not? will be boring. 
and then we'll say this is chapter three of the sample project. Um, right, and we'll, this is going to be huge. Yeah, because it's our title. We'll say that that's our title. And so now we have the sort of start of the text. And as we've seen in the previous projects, this is where you're going to have section level information here. So we're going to talk about what's happening with whatever we're doing in this section of the project. But now we want actually, oop, you know, I forgot to do something. Chapter three is still hanging out up here. So I want to move chapter three into there. So there it is, chapter three, the text, and then we need some images here. So one of the things that DM does that's really great is it allows you to upload images directly from online image files. And so we're going to do that. You can upload images that are on your own computer, which is really helpful if you're in a position where, let's say, you've gone to a library and you have taken a lot of your own photos that you want to include in the project. You can upload them. But if you're using images that are provided by an institution, you can use those too. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Bibliophily. This is a project out of Philadelphia. We were granted a grant from CLEAR, which is the Council on Library of Information Resources. We got the grant about four years ago now. It was a three-year project to digitize manuscripts in Philadelphia. And this is where we have them available to the public. In a minute, I'll show you another site that has more manuscripts where you can also download them. But this is kind of a user-friendly way to access them. So let's say you're interested in books of hours, which are pretty interesting books. So we go here and we say we want to see books of hours. There are 221 manuscripts, and this includes single leaves. So the, the Free Library of Philadelphia in particular has a lot of single leaves that are included. So here's one. I'm just picking this more or less at random. Lewis E.M. 519, Book of Hours from Flanders. So we click on that and we get this nice little, little view of all of this. But one of the things you can do directly from the site is you can download the images. So if I click on download as a large JPEG, what's actually gonna happen is that this is going to open in the browser. So it opens in the browser here. And then I've got that. Now, what I can do is I can copy this, come back to DM, say I want a new image. I want link to web. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to paste it, and then I'm going to change something here. Because you see this is HTTP colon. DM will not upload images that have HTTP in the URL. You need to have HTTPS in the URL. These images that are served on Bibliophily are served via Open, which is a site at Penn that I'll be showing you in a minute. And Penn has HTTPS capabilities. So we just, all we have to do in this case is add an S. We say add image, and there it is. Lewis. M519 and it's Martyrdom of St. Ursula. So there it is. There's our first image. We have our chapter three. We have our image. Oh, but again, the images when we add them are right here on the top level. So we want to put that in our image folder. So there we are. And we're going to zoom in. Here we are. We've zoomed in on the martyrdom of St. Ursula. And now, if we want, we can start making annotations on the image. We can start linking things together. So you can do your annotations in different shapes. You can make rectangular shapes. You can make circular shapes. You can add markers. So this would be marking a point instead of drawing an outline around something, you can just make a point. You can do free drawing, which is great if you want to highlight something that is a very irregular shape. If you're in a situation where it doesn't really work to put a bounding box or a circle around it, you can draw lines. 
in a little bit we'll take a look at a an image that has text on it. The lines is really great if you're looking at text like the addition that we looked at earlier. You're going to be drawing lines there. And then this is how you change the color of a shape and then these over here are to sort of navigate the image. So on the hand I can kind of grab it and move it around and this is the select and change highlight shape. Let's say you make a red circle and then you realize oh no wrong color and you have to change the color. Okay so let's start with Saint Ursula herself. I'm just gonna draw a box around her to start. So there she is and I'm gonna draw a box and there is Saint Ursula and now that I have this this box here I can annotate it. So I moused over and I get this little thing that says rectangular highlight and then I click on that and this little thing opens up and there's a few different things happening here. One of them is the name. So I want to change the name. This is not rectangular highlight. This is Saint, I'll say S-A-I-N-T, Saint Ursula and then I changed it. To do that I double click. I double click there and then I click on that and then it's back. And now a couple things. There's this little box that says drop link here and then I've got my own little link and you can see everyone has these links. So there's a link here, there's a link here, and then there's this add annotation. What the links do is identify different things. So this annotation has its own link. Chapter 3 has a link. If we wanted to, we could I grabbed it and I'm pulling it over and I'm going to drop it there and what this is doing is it's linking chapter 3 to Saint Ursula. I don't think I actually want to do that because chapter 3 is about more than Saint Ursula so then I delete that and I say okay I'm not going to do that. But I do want to add an annotation about Saint Ursula so I click on add annotation and a new document is going to open up here. So this is going to be annotation or I'll say about Saint Ursula, about St. Ursula, and you can see it looks just like the document here, but the annotation isn't showing up. The annotation isn't here. This annotation is linked specifically to this bounding box that's on this image, and it's about St. Ursula. I don't actually know very much about St. Ursula, so let's go to, I'm um, going to search for St. Ursula, St. Ursula, let's see. St. Ursula, Wikipedia. All right, so there's a Wikipedia page about St. Ursula, so this is great. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna be bad, and I'm just gonna copy some of that. You shouldn't actually do this, but I just wanna show you, so I'm just gonna copy that into the annotation. And you can see all of these are links out, and then I will say, read more, read more on Wikipedia. Okay. And now I can link, I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to, there we go. So I'm gonna add a hyperlink, say add, there it is. So now we've got actually multiple links out, right? Because I just copied this from Wikipedia, but now I've created this specific link out to Wikipedia. So now this is my St. Ursula link right now. However, I could also, I'm gonna close this annotation Let's say I also am interested in talking about Ursula in chapter three. So this chapter includes information, if I can spell, on Saint Ursula. Now I can create a hyperlink here and I will also make this yellow. And if I click on this, the same thing is going to happen. See, this this shows up. This is weirdly um, shaped. You can see it. We've still got the drop link here, and we've got the add annotation. But we already have this little thing about St. Ursula. We have this thing about St. Ursula. I want to link them together. So I'm going to grab this link and carry it over here and drop it there. And now the bounding box on the image, this yellow bounding box, has two annotations. It has about St. Ursula, which is its own text file that we created and then linked to Wikipedia, and then it has this 
phrase in the chapter three main document. The chapter three main document in the meantime is now annotated with this section of the image. So you can see there's St. Ursula. We're gonna close this, we're gonna close this. We're back in chapter three. If I click on this now, and then I click that, then we're taken right to St. Ursula. And then once we're there, of course, I can click on this and I can see, oh, there's this whole other annotation about St. Ursula. And the, you've seen this already in the other projects, but this is, this is like how DM works. I do wanna show you quickly the other ways to create bounding boxes, because I think it's sort of useful to know. So we have a square box, a rectangular box around her. Let's do a circle. Let's make them orange because now I am making notes about the flowers. I think the flowers are pretty. So oop, I got to move that. Okay. So you see, I, I, I want to move it. I clicked on it. It wants me to do an annotation. I don't want to do an annotation. I forgot to move them. You need to select and change highlight shape. So I'm going to select it, but th doing this, you can also get to move it now. Okay, great. So I'm moving that. And it's actually bigger than I want it to be. So I'm going to make it Okay, a little smaller, there we go. And I'll do another one just for fun. I'll do another circle down here for, oop, and again, I did that, okay. And then you have to come back up here, click it, and it's a little hard to grab it. There you go. And if I wanted to, I could have, let's say, this manuscript, in addition to having these great images of saints, also has some really interesting flowers in the margin. I could have another document here that's like all about flowers in the margin, and I could write out an essay about the flowers and then link to the examples that are here. And in doing the linking from the text to the image, the links would also go the other way. So if I was just looking at the image and I see these orange circles, I could, oops, <laughs> Right, I gotta go back to my little hand. I could click on here and here, and it, there would be a link here that would actually take me to the document where I could then read all about that in the flowers. That's how the circles look. Free drawing is great. Uh, let's do purple. I'm interested in this castle. So you just draw roll around him. Um, here we go, around there, here's the castle, it's there we go. So now we've got this annotation of the castle and we can do whatever we want with that. If we want to add markers, let's say we are interested in the trees that are here, but we don't want to outline every tree. So I just say there's a tree here, tree here. It looks like it wants me to, no, there we go. Tree, tree, right, you get the point. So you can use the marker to do that. Or I've also used markers, for example, to mark people. So you put a little marker on each person here and then you can say how many people there are and you can annotate them the same way you annotate the other ones and that's fine. Let's see, and then the lines are straight lines, but it might be more effective to show you that on a page that has some text on it. Okay, so this is a good time for me to show you open and how to import files that are on open directly. Bibliophily, I'm always gonna show this first because Bibliophily is kind of a very user-friendly way to find manuscripts because it has the search and browse. But there are a lot of manuscripts uh, at Penn that Penn hosts that we don't own that aren't on Philly that are on open by themselves. So we're gonna go to open.library.upenn.edu, but I am going to change this again to HTTPS. HTTPS. And this is going to, you can see there's a little, when I do that, this lock becomes locked because it means it's secure. HTTPS is just secure HTTP. 
but it's safer for us to do things like upload, uh, upload images. So we'll go to curated collections and we'll see what else is here. Um, Bibliophily or the Bibliotheca Philadelphiensis is here. We also have Cairo Geniza, we have Indic manuscripts, we have a lot of different collections that are happening, but because I'm invested in Bibliophily, we'll go to Bibliophily. So you can see this is all of the same material that's on, that's on the Bibliophily interface that's available through the interface, only it's much more scaled back and there's no really real effective search. But it's still, if you know the manuscripts you're looking for, you can still find it. So here's Bremoir. We'll just start with the first one, manuscript two. So I'm gonna browse that. Here is the, the record data and some other information. And then if you scroll all the way down, you get to the image files and they have text. So here's one with text. This is obviously not a book of hours. This has nothing to do with St. Ursula. This is just an example. If I click on that, it opens up here. So I'm going to copy the URL and come back to DM. I'm going to create a new image, link to web, and I paste it. And if we take a look at the front, it's HTTPS, so I can add image. If you ever have trouble adding an image or linking to an image online, check HTTP versus HTTPS because HTTP will not upload. All right, so here we are and we have some lines. And so this is really just for me to show you how to do lines. So we're gonna make green lines because why not? I click here and then click here and it just makes a straight line. So if your lines aren't super straight, then, oop, ah, oh, I forgot it did that. Do you see what happened? I went to make a new line and it just continued the line. So it's just gonna do that. So I don't want that. This is good though, because I can show you how to delete. So we've made a mistake. We need to select this one, which is select and change highlight shapes. So you click on that and it's hard to see, but there's now sort of a blue box all the way around it. And then I'm gonna trash it. I'm gonna delete the selective highlight. Delete, it's gonna ask you, do you want to do that? Yes, I do. Okay, so let's see if I can, if I can fix this. So I wanna draw a line. So I'm going, I'm gonna be a little more careful here. I'm gonna do under each word there. So it's not to, totally straight all the way across. There we go. Okay, and then I go out and so I click that, and so now that's the end of the line. I wanna create a new line, so I go to draw lines, and now it's not going to do that again, which is good. And then I'll just do that one more time, so you can see, you got it all the way. Click on the hand to say I'm ending my line, click back on the line, drawing a new line. There we go. As before in the addition, I can select one of these and make a highlight. And sometimes you could, you could do a full transcription. You could do a transcription of the line right there, or you could make a separate annotation. You could do a full transcription and then link the line here to the line in the transcription. There's different ways that you can do it, but that's basically it. So let's see. We've looked at uploading images. We've looked at creating documents. We've looked at creating annotations and linking things together. We haven't done search, so it is possible to search a project. Um, I'm gonna close this and we'll say, let's see if there's anything about St. Ursula here. Yep, and then immediately we find these annotations that, and if I click on these, they'll, they would open back up. The other thing is this over here. So this is how the items are viewed when you open them up. So we've really just been looking at one or two things at a time in the project. You can open sort of as many images or text files as you want to, as many annotations as you want to. If it's one by one, I open chapter three and then I open this image and you see Ursula shows up underneath because it's one by one. So as we keep going, 
let's see, we'll take a look at the, she's got her annotation and that will open also below. If we change it to one by two, then we have two and then one opens underneath it. Two by two um, is just a little bit smaller there. And then three by three is three side by side. And that's as many as you can get. And, and you, but you could, keep, you could keep opening it and it would open as many as, as you want. And when you have it open three by three, that's pretty crowded. But you can actually, if, if you have everything open that you want, you can click up here and it will move that aside. And then you just have access to, to these. And this is, this is useful whether you're in editing mode or if you're in regular mode. One more thing, there's check in and check out. This is really useful if you are working with multiple people on a project. I don't really think about it because I have been working on this on my own. But if you have multiple people working on a project, there's a check-in and check-out system, which will keep you from overwriting each other's work at the same time. So only one person can check out any document at a time. So I am currently editing all three of these. Let's say you're my partner on the project and you want to edit them too. Well, then I'd better check them in when I'm, when I'm done. And now I can send you a text and I can say, hey, I'm done with my part of the project. Why don't you go in and check my work? Maybe you're my supervisor and you need to check my work or you're my student and I have done the initial setup and I've left instructions for you. And now it's your turn to go in and edit it and follow my instructions. And then, of course, when you're done, you will also check them back in. And that's how that's how collaboration happens. This is the end of my show and tell tutorial for DM. I hope this has been useful. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. If you're interested in creating a project of your own, you can request an account at sims2.digitalmappa.org and go, go to registration and let me know that you have done that. Send me an email and, and I'll let you know. But thank you so much, and I hope this has been helpful. Bye-bye.